Hey everyone, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Bike. So, in this video, I will be going over transamination, oxidative deamination, transdeamination, and also briefly on L amino acid oxidases. Let us get into the details. So, what is actually transamination and why do we need transamination in the tissue? Note that whenever a protein is undergoing turnover or when protein is undergoing degradation in the tissues, so it will release amino acids as the product. So the amino acids coming from protein degradation, especially when a person is in catabolic condition, when pro new protein synthesis is not going on at that time, the carbon skeleton of an amino acid has to undergo a glucose formation or a ketone body formation for energy process. Basically, the carbon skeleton of an amino acid can be used to generate energy for the tissue, whereas the alpha amino group in an amino acid has to be safely transported to the liver and to certain extent to the kidney for safe handling of this amino group. Note that as it is shown in the figure here, there is an amino acid, it has got an alpha carbon then the primary carboxyl group, primary amino group and the side chain which you can write it as R or if it is an alanine side chain is CH3. So, this entire carbon skeleton whenever amino acid is undergoing catabolism, it will go towards the energy generation. Usually, they will either form glucose or ketone bodies. So, out of 20 standard amino acids, 18 of them can make glucose by going through gluconeogenesis process. Only two amino acids that is leucine and lysine will make ketone bodies. So, they are ketogenic. Rest 18 of them are glucogenic amino acids. And within this, so there are five amino acids that can make both glucose and ketone bodies. And those are three aromatic amino acids that is phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. And then we have isoleucine and threonine which can also make glucose and ketone bodies. So, other than these five, so uh, two amino acids which can make only ketone bodies, leucine and lysine. So this is how we can classify amino acids based on their fate during catabolic condition. So but the point here is carbon skeleton goes for the energy generation whereas the amino group has to be transported. How to transport an amino group? So, safe transport of amino group is a transamination process. What happens in the transamination process? In the transamination, the amino groups alpha carbon primary amino group, alpha carbon attached amino group is transported to a alpha keto acid. Okay. So, during this process, an intermediate here that is the pyridoxal phosphate, which is an active form of vitamin B6 pyridoxin. Uh, P pyridoxal phosphate is going to accept the primary amino group from an amino acid and it becomes pyridoxamine phosphate and then that amino group is given to alpha keto acid and that's when alpha keto acid becomes an amino acid while your original amino acid it becomes an alpha keto acid as it is shown in the figure here. So, amino acid 1 becomes an alpha, uh, alpha keto acid 1 and alpha keto acid 2 become an amino acid 2. So, pyridoxal phosphate act as a coenzyme for transaminases because the enzymes that catalyze this type of reactions are referred as transaminases and transaminases there are uh, transaminases for 18 amino acids. So, uh, example alanine alanine transaminase. What happens, uh, how alanine transaminase is going to catalyze the reaction. So, the primary amino group of alanine is transferred to the pyridoxal phosphate. From pyridoxal phosphate, it is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate is an acceptor of primary amino group and when it accepts the amino group coming from the amino acid through pyridoxal phosphate, and alpha ketoglutarate will become glutamate that is a new amino acid that is made. And what happened to the original amino acid that is alanine? Alanine after losing its primary amino group, it becomes a keto, its corresponding keto acid. What is the corresponding keto acid of alanine? Pyruvate. So, this type of reaction is catalyzed by alanine transaminase enzyme. Let me give you one more example. 
The other example is aspartate transaminase. Amino acid aspartate is going to transfer its amino group to pyridoxal phosphate. From pyridoxal phosphate, it is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate, and that's when alpha ketoglutarate is becoming glutamate. While your aspartate is converted its uh, to its corresponding keto acid, that is oxaloacetate. So uh, this is how transamination will go on. Uh, for 17 standard amino acids. Four amino acids don't undergo transamination reaction and that is proline and the derivative of proline that is hydroxyproline and threonine lysine. So these are the four amino acids don't undergo transamination. What are those? Proline, hydroxyproline, threonine and lysine don't undergo transamination process. Now, so like this, Transamination in tissues, especially in the peripheral tissues, will transfer its amino group to alpha ketoglutarate, and that's when alpha ketoglutarate becomes glutamate. Remember, in every transamination reaction, alpha ketoglutarate is the acceptor of the amino group, and then it becomes a glutamate. So, glutamate is made in the at the end of transamination reaction. So, the primary amino group of an amino acid is ultimately found in the glutamate. So, if you tag a primary amino group like nitrogen, if it is uh, radio labeled, you are going to find that primary amino group nitrogen in the glutamate ultimately. What happened to the carbons? So, the carbons of an amino acid will be found in its corresponding keto acids. Like carbons of alanines are found in pyruvate, carbons of aspartate are found in oxaloacetate. Okay, this is how the transamination process. So, let us quickly recap. So, the transamination is catalyzed by transferases, amino transferases or transaminases, which belongs to transferase category of enzyme. And transamination reaction is a reversible reaction. It needs a coenzyme called pyridoxal phosphate, which is an active form of pyridoxine. And also, the mechanism of transamination is referred as double displacement mechanism or ping pong mechanism because the primary amino group of an amino acid is first displaced and given to pyridoxyl phosphate. Pyridoxamine phosphate is going to displace its amino group and give it to alpha ketoglutarate and that is when alpha ketoglutarate becomes glutamate. So, this type of double displacement reactions are referred as ping pong mechanism. Remember that. That is the transamination process. Now, what happened to the glutamate in the peripheral tissues? So, the your amino group present uh, coming from a original amino acid now found in glutamate. Now, this glutamate can accept one more amino group and become glutamine. This will be done by glutamine synthetase enzyme which consumes ATP of course. Now, glutamine synthetase is going to add ammonium ion to glutamate and make it as glutamine. Now, glutamine has two amino groups. One is attached to the primary carbon alpha carbon and the second amino group is there in the side chain. So, now this glutamine comes out of the peripheral tissues into the blood and note that the predominant type of amino acid that is found in our blood is glutamine. And if you look at skeletal muscle, so the type of I mean a predominant type of amino acid that is coming out of transamination process out of the skeletal muscle is alanine and then glutamine. So otherwise all other peripheral tissues it is the glutamine. So overall we have alanine, we have glutamine in the blood which are carrying the amino groups. So especially we uh, let us look at glutamine now. So glutamate which is made as glutamine, so glutamine is there in the blood carried to the liver and to the kidney. So what happens in the liver, primarily, primarily in the liver. So in the liver, especially in the mitochondria of the liver, so what happens, glutaminase enzyme is going to break that glutamine into glutamate and release ammonium ion and that ammonium ion will go into urea cycle. You know, remember liver as the urea cycle. So, we are going to go into the urea cycle later in my uh, future videos. Now, we have glutamate. So, glutamine is converted to glutamate now after releasing ammonium ion by glutaminase enzyme. This is a mitochondrial enzyme. Same similar reaction will also go on in the kidney. Now, what happens to the glutamate? Glutamate undergoes oxidative deamination reaction now coming to the oxidative deamination process. 
So glutamate undergoing oxidative deamination, releasing ammonium ion and become alpha ketoglutarate. It's a reversible reaction. Oxidative deamination of glutamate is a reversible reaction catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme. It's a mitochondrial enzyme again. So the speciality of glutamate dehydrogenase is it can accept either NAD or NADP. So NAD if it enters in it is coming out as NADH plus H plus or NA, if NADP enters in it comes out as NADPH plus H plus. So that's the speciality of glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme. It can accept both NADs or NADPs into the reaction and oxidatively deaminate glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate and ammonium ion comes out. Now what happens to that ammonium ion? Remember, ammonium ion is neurotoxic. It has to be handled properly. That's why we have transferred the primary amino group, all the amino acids from peripheral tissues, put that into glutamate, glutamate into glutamine. We brought glutamine into the liver and in the liver, glutamine breaks into glutamate by glutaminase, release ammonium ion and that goes into urea cycle because it is going on in the mitochondrial matrix and note that uh, first two reactions of urea cycles or uh, urea cycle is also there in it happens in the matrix of mitochondria. Now the glutamate breaks into alpha ketoglutarate releasing one more ammonium ion and that ammonium ion will also go into urea cycle. So basically we have carried primary amino groups of amino acids in the form of glutamine break that glutamine into glutamate and break glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate by oxidative deamination process and thereby we are going uh, liver is going to handle that ammonium ion safely put that into urea and secrete urea into the blood and kidney is going to filter that out into the urine so what kidney does with the glutamine glutamine uh, fate of glutamine in the kidney is same as in the liver uh, glutaminase enzyme in the kidney release ammonium ion and that ammonium ion enters into the urine directly glutamate breaks into alpha ketoglutarate by glutamate dehydrogenase reaction and ammonium ion enters into the urine directly in the kidney. So kidney is the second line of defense against hyperammonemia uh, when compared to the liver. Liver is the first line of defense there. Now this is what is oxidative deamination process where you are deaminating glutamate into alpha keto glutarate. So what happened now? So the, in the transamination process, we have taken primary amino group from an amino acid, put that into alpha ketoglutarate to become glutamate. That is transamination. Amino group is transferred. It is there in the glutamate. Now that glutamate, which is entering into the matrix of mitochondria in the liver, so it is undergoing oxidative deamination process, releasing ammonium ion. And that ammonium ion will go into urea cycle. So we have transferred amino group nitrogen or the amino group, primary amino group of an amino acid all the way into the liver. So it's a combined two process here. Two processes are combined. Transamination is indirectly combined with uh, oxidative deamination. These two processes together is called as trans deamination process, trans deamination. Amino group is transferred and then it is undergoing deamination. Amino group, amino group say example, amino group from alanine is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate to become glutamate and glutamate undergoes deamination uh, releasing ammonium ion and alpha ketoglutarate, so ammonium ion going into urea cycle. So it's a transamination oxidative deamination coupled together now referred as trans deamination process which helps in the transfer of primary amino group from the peripheral tissues to the liver uh, for safe handling of primary amino group uh, to make urea and secrete that urea into the blood to get out of our body through the kidney into the urine. So this is what is trans deamination process. Let me brief you a little bit about L-amino acid oxidase. L-amino acid oxidase is uh, predominantly found in the kidney and also to certain extent in the liver. So what this L-amino acid oxidase does? L-amino acid oxidase, there it is going to break that, it is going to oxidize uh, amino acid into a alpha amino acid. Alpha amino acid is converted to alpha amino acid during this process. FMN, that is flavin mononucleotide, is converted into a reduced form of FMN called FMNH2 and this FMNH2 
it is going to react with molecular oxygen and release hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide is the byproduct of L amino acid oxidase and the alpha amino acid further it will undergo deamination process to release ammonium ion and alpha keto acid this is the hydrolysis process water gets in and ammonium ion release and alpha keto acid is released so, and alpha keto acid can can be used for energy generation ammonium ion is safely uh, entering into the urine in the kidney if it happens in the kidney if it happens in the liver it enters into urea cycle so remember um, L amino acid oxidase since it is making hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide need to be handled properly and this hydrogen peroxide can be handled by catalase enzyme and that means L amino acid oxidases uh, and catalase enzyme they are richly available in the peroxisomes of these tissues okay so this is what is all about transamination process oxidative deamination process trans deamination process and L amino acid oxidase enzyme so this is how we are going to take care of primary amino group of an amino acid safely transport that out of the tissues to the liver and kidney and in the liver and kidney this amino group is released as ammonium ion and ammonium ion in the liver will go into urea cycle in the kidney it just goes into the urine directly so liver is the primary line of defense against hyperammonemia kidney is the second line of defense against hyperammonemia so that's all about transamination oxidative deamination trans deamination and l amino acid oxidase i hope this video has helped you in understanding this relatively difficult topic to understand so if you have any question let me know in the comment section below and if you have any uh, special request for any videos let me know in the comment section below uh, that's about it and i will see you in my next video till then you take care. Bye-bye.